So do you think the universe has an end? If you think it's a book with an end? I think the number of words required to describe how the universe works has an end, yes. <laughs> Meaning, like, I don't care if it's infinite or not. Right. As long as the explanation is simple and it exists. Oh, I see. And I think there is a finite explanation for each aspect of it. The yeah. consciousness, the life. Yeah. Um, I mean, very probably there's like some, the black hole thing is like, what's going on there? Oh, Where's that going? So like, fun, where did they, weird. what? And then, you know, why the Big Bang? Like, what? Right. It's, it's probably there's just a huge number of universes and it's like universes inside so? universe. I think universes inside universes is maybe possible. I just think it's, it, um, every time we assume this is all there is, <laughs> it, it turns out there's much more. The universe is a huge place. And we mostly talked about the past and the richness of the past, but the future, I mean, with um, with many worlds, interpretation of quantum mechanics, so. Oh, I'm the, not a many the, worlds person. You're not. No, are you? <laughs> How many Lexes are there? Depending on the day. Well. Do some uh, of them wear yellow jackets? At the moment, at the moment we <laughs> asked the question, there was one. Uh, at the moment I'm answering it, there's now in, in, in near infinity, apparently. Um, I mean, the future is, is the future is bigger than the past, yes? Yes. Okay. Well, I there you so. go. But in the past, according to and you, it's already the, gigantic. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's consistent with many worlds, right? Because like there's this constant branching. So, but it doesn't really have a directionality to it. Cause it's, it's a, I don't know, many worlds is weird. So my interpretation of reality is like if you fold it up, like all that bifurcation of many worlds and you just fold it into the structure that is you and you just said you are all of those many worlds and like that sort of, you know, like like your history like converged on you, but you're like you're, you're actually an object exists that's like that, you know, was selected to exist and you're self-consistent with the other structures. So like the quantum mechanical reality is is not the one that you live in. It's this very deterministic uh, classical world. And you're carving a path through that space. But I don't think that you're constantly branching into new spaces. I think you are that space. Wait, so to you at, at the bottom, it's, it's deterministic. It's I thought you said the universe. No, is, it's, it's random at the random. bottom, right? But like this randomness that we see at the bottom of reality that is quantum mechanics, I think like people have assumed that that is reality. And what I'm saying is like all those things you see in many worlds, all those versions of you, just collect them up and bundle them up. And like, they're all you. And what has happened is, you know, like elementary particles don't have, they don't live in a deterministic universe. The things that we study in quantum experiments, they live in this fuzzy random space. But as that structure collapsed and started to build structures that were deterministic and evolved into you, you are a very deterministic microscopic o macroscopic object. And you can look down on that universe that doesn't have time in it, that random structure. Um, and you can see that all of these possibilities look possible, but they don't look, they're not possible for you because you're constrained by this giant, like causal structural history. Um, so you can't live in all those universes. You'd have to go all the way back to the very beginning of the universe and retrace everything again to be a different you. So where's the source of the free will for the macro object? Um, it's the fact that you're a deterministic structure living in a random background. And also all of that selection bundled in you allows you to select on possible futures. So that's where your will comes from. And there's just always a little bit of randomness because the universe is getting bigger. And, you know, like uh, this idea that the past is and the present is not large enough yet to contain the future. The extra structure has to come from somewhere. <laughs> um, and some of that is because outside of those giant causal structures that are things like us, it's fucking random out there <laughs> and it's scary and we're all hanging on to each other because the only way to hang on to each other like the only way to exist is to like cling on to all of these causal structures that we happen to co-inhabitate existence with and try to keep reinforcing each other's existence all the selection bundled well, in and us but but free will is totally consistent with that I don't know what I think about that that's complicated to imagine uh, just that little bit of randomness is enough Okay.
Well, it's also, it's not just the randomness. There's two features. One is the randomness helps generate some novelty and some flexibility. But it's also that, like, because you're, you're, you're the structure that's deep in time, you have this combinatorial history that's you. And uh, I think about time and assembly theory not as linear time, but as combinatorial time. So if you have all of this structure that you're built out of, you, in principle, you know, your future can be combinations of that structure. You obviously need to persist yourself as a coherent you. So you want to optimize for a common, like a, a, a future in that combinatorial space that still includes you um, most of the time for most of us. Um, and, um, and when you make those kinds, of, and then that gives you a space to operate in. Uh, and that's your sort of horizon where your free will can operate. And your free will can't be instantaneous. So for like exa- example, like I'm sitting here talking to you right now, I can't mm-hmm. be in the UK and I can't be in Arizona, but I could plan, I could execute my free will over time because free will is a temporal feature of life uh, to be there, you know, tomorrow or the, or the next day if I wanted to. But what about like the uh, instantaneous decisions you're making? Like to, I don't know, to put your hand on the table. That's. I think those were already decided a while ago. I don't think they're, they're, I don't think free will is ever instantaneous. But on a longer time horizon, yep. there's some kind of steering going on. Mm-hmm. And who's doing the steering? You are. Hmm. And you being this macro object that's encompasses. Or you being Lex. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> There, there you are saying <laughs> words to things once again. I know.